Hey everybody, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. We're now in episode 13, if I'm not mistaken. And in this episode, I thought, well, we've been to Ike, we've been to Duna, we've done Minmus, uh, and now I thought, well, why not complete a couple of these contracts that we've got going on? So, uh, first of all, I thought we'll do the temperature readings. Now, the temperature readings are pretty difficult, to be fair. Not massively difficult, but they do offer some complexity. Now, the reason is because you need to make sure your rocket has enough uh, delta V or enough fuel in order to perform the delta V to get into position. So you can see the orbit is not horizontal, it's kind of set at an angle. So then you have to make sure you're at a low enough altitude. You can see you need to be around 9,000 meters up to 10, up to sort of 9,800 meters for each of the missions. Now it's a bit of a pain in the bum trying to get there. So I've managed to get there and then we just need to fast forward and I kind of edited the video just so it, you know, it doesn't waste or so you don't have to spend too much time looking at it. But essentially, hopefully, if you're using this as a tutorial, then you can follow what I'm doing. And if you're using it as pure entertainment, then you can see Reinstein performing his missions. So I completed that first temperature reading. Then again, because you're so low uh, as you orbit around the moon, it does take quite a while for your ship to get into position. So that's kind of why I've edited this video. I imagine all of the videos from here on out will be edited unless I'm messing around with like rovers and something cool, you know? I have got a video planned for a rover coming up where I intend to land on the moon and sort of drive around, but it's taken a while to produce. So in the meantime, we need to get back to reality, complete some of these contracts. And the good thing about completing contracts is you get a load of money, but you also, depending on what you set, you get loads of um, uh, reputation points and you get loads of science, depending on what it is and, and what exactly is required of you. So there's the second temperature reading done. Simple as. Now I thought, all right, we'll set another maneuver. We've got to do this final one. I didn't want to drag it out and do two missions to complete the temperature readings. And thankfully, my rocket was pretty darn good. Now, it's unmanned because I didn't want to get any Kerbals, any more Kerbals, stranded up there. You know what I'm like, freaking getting um, Valentina stranded in an earlier video. We had to go and rescue her. There's enough missions where you're rescuing um, Kerbals out of uh, orbit of the of Kerbin anyway. So, uh, essentially, here we go. So, I'm on track to get the third, uh, the third temperature reading. And you can't warp, as you can see, you can't warp faster while below 10,000 meters. So, pain in the bum. So, what you're looking for is when, when you're going across the surface, it sort of gives you a notification saying you're in this area. Uh, you can now do your temperature reading. And you can see on the right-hand side, I've met two of the objectives. And I've got my little rocket here. And I thought, well... If we can get into that final area, take the temperature reading. I don't need to return it to um, Kerbin, so why not just land the thing? Uh, but there we are. We're leaving area C242, so I was like, damn it, god damn it, we'll have to burn retrograde again. Fast forward, and now we're entering it, and it's like, yeah, finally we can get that temperature reading. And we get the third one. And like I say, this rocket will pretty much... Um, be landed on the surface of the moon and stay up there. Um, there we go. I can even revisit it and take some more science readings if I need to because it's generating electricity, has an antenna and uh, solar panels and everything. So it's all good. And there we go. Landed it. Thought I'd get some more science out of it while it's here. And I can revisit this, like I say, and maybe sometime in the future and see if it gives me different readings. So then we move on to the next mission, which is to do EVA, is it EVA reports or crew reports um, above the moon? Another one of the contracts that we need to complete. They, to be honest, I find them quite boring because they're not exactly like the most stimulating of missions, but they do need to be done if you want to increase your reputation and get loads more money, which I do, because then I can get, um, you can actually use reputation points to um, get research points. So whatever resources I can get, I just want to generate uh, research points so I can get as many different um, parts as I can to build more interesting rockets, you see? So there we go. That was the rocket going into orbit, and then we get to the moon, and uh, you can see we're doing... Um, 
you basically need to land on these areas, which has its own difficulty, and like I say, you do need a Kerbin on them, so you, you kind of want enough fuel in order to get back. I don't want to leave Jebediah up there. Jebediah is my most experienced pilot, and the man is quite frankly a legend in his own time. He's like the Neil Armstrong, or the Buzz Aldrin, first people to walk on the moon, um, of his generation, of the Kerbal generation. So here we go. I imagine the Kerbals are like some sort of futuristic humans. After few humans have died out and we've lost all of our uh, lost all of our uh, research and, and, and technology, then essentially, oh god there's a big explosion, <laughs> then essentially we go back and uh, regain all our science points in the form of Kerbals and then they do their own space Set program. So there we go. We've landed and we need to Get out. We need to get out and do our little readings. So I'm going to activate Start my moving. navigation uh, and then take an EVA report. So just get. Start on screen keyboard. <laughs> I can hear loads of weird like talking. I don't know where that's coming from. Set up high contrast. <laughs> it's like Jebediah is talking to me. There we go. So we've got our EVA report and we have to take off. And this is quite the. This is really quite a tricky part of the missions because. I mean, you could do it with a rover, I guess, but I don't think I had the. T I don't think I have the technology to do it. I don't even have rover parts, so I'm, I didn't know it any other way. So I thought, well, we'll do it this way. Try and get a rocket good enough that can like traverse itself across the surface like this with enough control in order to land it in several places. Not not an entirely easy undertaking. I'd be curious to hear how you guys have get on got on with it. So there we go. We're now entering Judith's slide again. Another EVA report. Um, eventually, you can take soil samples and uh, do atmospheric analysis once you unlock some more research, which is uh, pretty exciting. I'm really looking forward to getting to that stage. So I'm kind of rushing through these earlier missions because they I've done them all before. You can see my earlier videos where I've um, done them. It's without uh, some of the more latest features. It wasn't in 1.0.5. Uh, I think it was in... 0.23 maybe but take a look at my earlier videos and you'll, you'll be able to see me driving around on some rovers and going to Ike with rovers uh, Aduna possibly with rovers and all sorts of cool stuff like that so here we go we get loads of science data and we can see that we completed our objective yay so now we get back into our rocket and Jeb is safe he's like will I be safe enough to return home though you know, we've completed this, have I got enough fuel? And you look across at the flight engineer mod that I've got on the right hand side, that's one of my favorite mods to be honest. Um, that's the only mod I'm using. And it tells me that I've got a delta V of just over 1400 meters per second left, which I think is enough. It might cause a bit of a dangerous re-entry into Kerbin. But uh, as long as we control it properly, then we're good. So here we go, we've got our re-entry and uh, we're golden. As long as that heat shield holds up, Jebediah is going to land safely. The other scary thing about landing back on Kerbin is... Ooh, slight explosion. <laughs> is uh, don't land on top of a mountain because your parachute won't open in time. There we go. We land back on in the ocean and Jebediah's like, Frickin' hell, you saved me. 161 science and uh, we're good to unlock something else. So I was taking a look around and I'm like, which bit do I want to unlock? And the, the one at the top really intrigues me because it's got like a giant fuel tank with a um, rocket engine attached to it. But I was having a little look around just to see what's available. The advanced grabbing unit could be used for meteorites or asteroids, I mean, eventually. But uh, I just wanted to see what was available. So I went on and I unlocked the uh, large fuel tank at the top. Not this one, the one further up. There we go. So thank you ever so much for watching. Hopefully you find these videos useful and join me on the next one. Take care, guys.